In this tutorial, we will be discussing phospholipids. The phospholipids are a family of lipids similar to the structure triacylglycerols. They include a glycerophospholipids and, sphingomy and sphingomyelin. Glycerophospholipids contain two fatty acids that form ester bonds with the first and second hydroxyl groups of glycerophospholipids of glycerol. A hydroxyl group that forms an ester with phosphoric acid, which forms a bond of phosphoester bond with an amino alcohol. This phosphoric acid, this phosphate and amino alcohol portion, is the most important part of the glycerophospholipids. It's the thing that makes it stand apart. Sphingomyelin contains sphingosin instead of glycerol. It contains a fatty acid, a phosphate, an amino alcohol. And then up here, we have just a carbon chain. Amino acids, amino alcohols found in glycerophospholipids are choline, urine, and ethanolamine. They are ionized at a physiological pH of 7.4. So here are two of those glycerophospholipids. They're abundant in the brain and nerve tissues and found in egg yolk, wheat germ, and yeast. So here is that all-important phosphate complex. That's what's giving it its polar capabilities. The rest of this is nonpolar. That's just like the glycerophospholipids that we talked about earlier. Because this is nonpolar, it doesn't interact with water. However, this polar side can. Glycerophospholipids have both polar and nonpolar regions that allow them to interact with polar and nonpolar substances, such as water here and other nonpolars like oils and other nutrients for the nonpolar substances. They have a polar head containing an ionized amino alcohol and phosphate portion, which is strongly attracted to water. They have nonpolar hydrocarbon tail, which comes from that fatty acid, soluble only in nonpolar substances such as lipids and are most abundant lipids in the cell membrane and play an important role in cell permeability. So here's how these are formed. We have esters formed here to give us that nonpolar tail. That's what we've seen in glycerol up until now. The difference is this third carbon here. It has a phosphoric acid or a phosphate ion here that it's attaching to. And then it has another dehydration reaction going on here. This is giving it an area which is polar because of all the, ox the, all the oxygen is giving it a lot of negativity. And so this area here that has pluses and minuses in it gives it the ability to interact with water. And as sphingomyelin, the amine group of sphingosine forms an amide bond to a fatty acid. The hydroxyl group for, forms an ester bond with phosphate, which forms another phosphoester bond to cho choline and ethanolamine. So here we have this format. Notice on the very top, that's not an ester. It's merely a carbon chain. Then the difference here, instead of having an oxygen here, you actually have another nitrogen. This here is similar to what we've seen in the phosphoglycerols right here. And that's your introduction to phospholipids.